What's going on guys, Dr. Michael Moeller here and I've been getting a lot of questions here recently about the peptide Cerebrolysin. And when a lot of people ask me about it, they go, Dr. Mo, what do you know about Cerebrolysin? I say, oh, the pig brain peptide that's used as a nootropic? It usually raises quite a bit of eyebrows. So today I'd like to talk about what I know about the peptide Cerebrolysin. And if any of you guys out there have used this before, please leave a comment below and let us know about your experience. Uh, but stay tuned. All righty. Y'all ready to talk about that pig's brain, huh? Cerebrolysin. Why I keep talking about that is because actually these growth factors are purified out of pig's brain. That's where cerebrolysin comes from. So the blood-brain barrier can often be hard to penetrate and get stuff into. And cerebrolysin is small enough that it can penetrate the blood-brain barrier. And it's made up of all of these growth factors that enhance neurogenesis. Brain-derived, glial cell, nerve, ciliary. Fun little fact for you, brain-derived nootropic factor was also first discovered through, uh, opto or they pulled it out of a pig's brain. So cerebrolysin also seems to decrease lactic acid. So lactic acid is used in the body to be converted into pyruvate through something called the Cori cycle, and it can turn that into energy. Little sites uh, tangent to astrocytes, there's like this hypothesis that they can use lactic acid, but most of the time lactic acid is going to be going to the liver to be turned back into pyruvate. So then you get your ATP, which is your, your energy production in the body. High amounts of lactic acid, though, do cause inflammation. So if cerebrolysin is able to decrease lactic acid, it's going to decrease the brain's inflammation. And we know inflammation is not a good thing. So anytime we can get, get rid of inflammation, that's a win. Also, it seems like the cerebrolysin is allowing the brain to operate with less oxygen. And I think that has something to do with this, the Cori cycle, because that when you take lactic acid and you shuttle it back into pyruvate, your body, it, it's not an optimal way to produce a lot of ATP, but it does produce, it, it's, it's like the body becomes better at optimizing what little bit it has through anaerobic because there's no oxygen. So the body has to figure out how to use uh, less oxygen. So again, it seems like it's influencing the neurons and in the brain to work better without oxygen. So when we have these pathologies with less oxygen, like Alzheimer's and vascular dementia and, and stroke, it would make sense that this is how cerebrolysin is working on the brain. Now, I also saw something about it inhibiting apoptosis, which is actually a normal part of this uh, cell process to, to die. But if it's maybe it's helping them live longer, which means you have more neurons, which can be a good thing, but probably not a good thing if you have some form of tumor or cancer that is growing. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, what is it used for? So cerebrolysin has actually gotten more popular uh, outside of the United States. I think there's actually a drug company in Europe that that uses it for like uh, ischemic, uh, ischemic strokes and Alzheimer's and dementia. And that's where a lot of the clinical trials are happening and specifically for those three forms of pathology. Now, the reason why most of you people are here, if you're following my channel, is probably more for the nootropic reasons. So I talked earlier about how it's going to decrease neurodegeneration and increase stuff like BDNF. So basically it can work to enhance our cognitive function. And that's how I've used it on myself and how I've used it in some of my patients. And I've gotten some pretty good feedback uh, thus far. And I've also talked to some of my colleagues who've been using it. So, so decreasing fatigue and brain fog. I also saw a study where it seemed like it increased the alpha wave brain, the alpha wave brain state. Uh, alpha wave brain state is going to help you with concentration. <laughs> Uh, side effects, make sure you're being safe, people. I talk about this before. I get my peptides from TaylorMade Compounding. If you're following my channel, I have a lot of other resources talking about peptides. I've actually talked to Ryan Smith, who works at TaylorMade Compounding. Because I'm passionate about peptides, I think they're really cool, and I think they're, they're somewhat, they're like the forefront of, especially like the biohacking, or whatever you want to call it, like longevity, uh, anti-aging. So we have to be really careful. If we're buying these things online, they're going to get contaminated. You're probably getting bunk anyways and then you're injecting it in your skin not a good idea these anything that you're injecting can be contaminated and your skin is there for a reason to keep these things out so making sure that you get good peptide 
So, and also too early, some of the earlier clinical trials, they seem like in higher doses, people were having weight loss and I'm, I'm, I wasn't completely clear of why that was happening. Uh, more so, it seemed like a negative side effect, like people weren't eating or it was affecting their appetite. But most anything you put in your body, medications, you'll have just like a three to 5% chance of like random stuff happening, like headaches, dizziness, anxiety, agitation. And I personally, I have some MTHFR mutations. So I do, I'm a, I'm a little more on the anxious, agi agitated end. And I did feel that way a little bit from this Revo uh after a couple hours of use. But a lot of the patients that I've talked to and uh, didn't seem like they had that problem. So if you have, yeah, let us know if you have any side effects from it. Dose and administration. I personally, with 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 my patients, I'm, I have a uh, I do one ml injection subcutaneous daily for about thirty days, and you can also do like a five day on, two day off thing as well. And but most of the studies, people are using it intravenously, and most of the time in the studies, they are using it right after the ischemic events. Uh, it, they used it for TBIs, and it seemed like it had some benefits from there. Contraindications, obviously you can have an allergy to it. I talked about earlier, probably not a good idea if you have cancer, if this is going to be having growth factors increase the, uh, the growth of, of things. We, we don't want that in cancer. And because it's purified from pig, uh, probably not a good idea if you have some form of autoimmune, but it's, it's hard to tell. Um, let's see, here are some studies, some of the P PMIDs that you can go on to PubMed and uh, look into some of the studies that I've looked into. There's, there's plenty more. I just referenced a handful of them there. I'm trying to think if I forgot anything about cerebralicin. Overall seems pretty promising in the neurodegeneration space. So any you people out there, oh, no, you know, there was a couple of studies that uh, for Alzheimer's that showed people helped with like arithmetic so again with a lot of these we work kind of backwards with a lot of this longevity it's like it works in pathology so maybe it'll work by you know boosting whatever we have now just just a quick reminder that's not necessarily how everything works sometimes it'll just get you back to to the baseline so hey if you've enjoyed this give me a like if you want to learn more about peptides and their longevity check out my podcast hit the subscribe button and if any of your friends are interested, please give it a share. Um, until next time.